Art direction is greater than graphics. Sure, we'll watch this. If you don't know Audible, well darn, looks like I need to tell you about Audible. The fan fantastic place to get a ton of great audiobooks to listen to anywhere, anytime. Audible has a huge selection of audiobooks, everything from the old classics way back in the day to the new books coming out now, and it is usable on both your computer, app, and basically here, there, anywhere on the Bro, I, I, I'm surprised Audible still sponsors people. Like, I feel like everybody knows about Audible by now. Yeah. Go. As for audiobook recommendations, you all know me, you know I love my Warhammer books, but sometimes Warhammer can get a little dark and depressing. Yeah, so instead, let's find some that's a little bit more lighthearted. The Infinite and the Divine is a hilarious spy versus spy over 10,000 years story about two Necrons at each other's throats. And one I have not read yet, but want to get into very soon, is Caiaphas Cain, Hero of the Imperium, the Commissar that stumbles his way to victory across all of the wonderful Warhammer 40k hmm. universe. Wonderful, I say, in quotes. If you want to check out these or any other audiobooks, go ahead and look in the description Necron's and go to yeah. audible.com slash bricky or text bricky to 500 500. Thank you very much to Audible for sponsoring this video and let's get on with the topic. Let's see it. Hello everybody, my Hi. name is Bricky, currently serving 10 to life for forcing you to draw Wonder Bread. Graphics are defined as a product of the graphic arts, usually in design or illustration. It is also sure. known as visual images from computer processing. But to us, it's how good the game looks, all right? Gamers, we deem graphics as do that shit look good. Exactly. I suppose you could okay. say it's origin Here we go. sense. If I go back to that Battlefield Let's 3 trailer way back when, I would say, dang, those are some good graphics. As in, literally, the things I am seeing mm -hmm. look good. The graphics on screen. Yes, but really, graphics great. now are a term more so used to describe how good looking a game is. Does it have a good visual fidelity? Are I think that, like, yeah, visual fidelity and... Like the the resolution of like the character models and how like how detailed something is, I think people refer to as graphics. Whereas like I think the art of the game is like the style. Direction. I think is graphics and style are different. Works from an art director overseeing a film, publication, or any other media. Another like way that's to describe how I see it, it would be the process that creates the feeling of a tone or a setting in some kind of media. If the tone you're going for is a dark dire depressing tone oh, how do you convey that through a visual mean that doesn't clash with the tone itself because i think it would be quite jarring if you told cormac mccarthy's the road story while making it look like grand budapest hotel the strength of your graphics, say for a film or TV show, the resolution, the quality of your camera is not what's used in order to create the tone you are going for. It certainly helps, but having a good resolution, having it look good from an actual pixel point of view doesn't convey tone. The opening of Saving Private Ryan isn't good because it's in 8K, 700 frames a second. Yeah. It conveys a harrowing tone by sucking all the color out, by making it seem really claustrophobic, and with the use of props and extras on the battlefield to make it look like a battlefield. Sure. Or even smaller touches like never showing the face of the enemy in the beginning sequences and only seeing either the point of view of their gun or the point of view of the soldiers with just those slight muzzle flashes coming from the bunker. Putting all these things together creates not only a very hard to watch opening to a film, but it creates that tone you're looking for in which graphics mean almost nothing. This is something I've had to end up explain on more occasions than I would particularly like to. Yeah, people don't fucking understand it. Yeah, I, I wanted to let him completely explain that. I think there's a lot of examples of this. You guys ever seen Limitless and like whenever the guy's on the drugs, the saturation of the colors becomes like much more evident uh sin city i think is another great example of the art direction uh let's see uh fuck those are the first two that come to my mind and uh dread yeah the, the matrix i think that's another good one 300 yeah you can think of like movies that are just like super fucking stylized Zack schneider movies pretty much all of them are like that and I'm trying to think of some other ones with like very evident, oh, like 1917, it's like 1917, 1914, I think it was 1917, uh, the, the movie where it's like, it's filmed as if it is all one massive take. So like, that's another example. Yeah, Tim Burton is another great example of that. Uh, fuck. 
Mad Max. Yeah, Mad Max is a good example of that too, for sure. And I think games are the same thing. Like Wind Waker was one of the first games that did this. This it got very popular in GameCube days with like they called it cell shading at the time. And now you have like all the anime variants of that, like Genshin Impact, Tower of Fantasy, uh, fucking Blue Protocol. I mean, there's like literally a thousand of these games coming out because people like them. Borderlands, yeah, there you go. Jet Set Radio. So this is there. There are a lot of examples of this, and it's in film, obviously. Uh, art itself has very evident themes and like the direction of the art is very clear and it's the reason why i wanted to talk about it today as far as i'm concerned graphics mean next to nothing while art mm -hmm. direction is consistently superior graphics are temporary yes art direction is forever let's this start with so an example he, by the way on this he is totally fucking right about like the the premise of this video is something i completely agree with the one i used earlier Battlefield 3. Yeah, Valheim Battlefield has always triumphed its graphics. Particularly when yeah. Battlefield 3 came out. I remember the war that was happening at the time. Modern Warfare 3 versus Battlefield 3. It was like a console war at the time. Or about as juvenile as one. But hey, I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah. But in that little campaign trailer. When you're getting pinned down by a sniper. And you had to fire a rocket at it. And the mm -hmm. building kind of crumbled around the spot where you fired it at. And I was sitting there thinking. That was awesome. This is going to be the best goddamn game ever. Exactly. And about 2,000 games of Operation Metro later. Yeah, it was pretty great. I love Battlefield 3, but despite my like for the game, I can't remember a single campaign mission. Better yet, I can't remember a single mission of the campaign, a level, a play space. I know it was in the Middle East, I think. You play as Americans. I don't remember anything. Yeah, this is one of the weaknesses that games that are very realistic uh, run into, is that because of their realism, they lack a specific uh, artistic style that people can remember about the campaign not just because the story was boring but also i remember that bridge i, just, I don't remember yeah, where i was i don't remember a vista or a combat room or a special encounter mm -hmm. i don't i don't remember anything hell i don't remember anything for the battlefield 4 campaign or the hardline remember i don't even remember hardline the only mission i really I mean, if you don't remember anything about the campaign i think it just says the campaign sucks okay like let's just be honest Remember in Battlefield 1 was the opening one where every time you died, you went to a new person. That was actually pretty cool. But besides that, I don't remember any of this because none of it's memorable because graphics triumphed because it was trying to make it look photorealistic and yeah. not try to give it some kind of identity, some kind of feeling when you walk into a room and you think, wow, as you see this kind of environment sprawled down in front of you. It was about making it look realistic yeah. and that made it less than memorable the story didn't help but it made it forgettable take sure. an almost identical setting though and move it over again like with Fortnite. spec ops the line an incredible game okay. spec ops is but when it comes to the setting it's not identical american soldiers in a foreign country generally middle eastern okay. similar colors lots of buildings and sand but the parts of spec ops just stay in my head so much better the imagery of that game has so much well, yeah like i mean that's isn't that scene pretty much straight out of jarhead yeah it, it, it it's cinematically appealing it looks good visually it's not just that it's photorealistic but it's stylized in a way that's memorable or character to it the sand swept dubai how it almost creates some kind of like bowl with the huge yeah that's badass of sand the glass towers and skyscrapers all over the area sometimes i would walk into a room and that imagery would stay with me either because it was so incredibly harrowing or it was just put together really well even in a to be fair i think this is an unfair comparison because it's very obvious Bro, like, this is not real life at all. And because it's not it like so this incredibly is... incredibly harrowing. Yeah, this is not real. Like, having a bunch of people hanging from street lamps, stuff like this. So, obviously, this is going to be more realistic than Battlefield. Because Battlefield has a, 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 a realism tone. Like, this does not have a tone of realism, even though it looks photorealistic. Does that make sense? Uh, it's not real life yet. Other way around. Cartel, no. It was grounded as fuck. This happened. So you're telling me that a bunch of people were hanging from streetlights 
in a massive like uh, a massive pile of destroyed cars right outside of Dubai City? Yes, send me a picture of it. I, I don't believe you. Or it was just put together really well. Even in a game about sand swept Dubai, yeah. it still can work with its colors. It still has multiple times where it is bright and vibrant mm -hmm. and it has good looking colors in an area that should yeah, only be gray and tan. Even your characters have sand and blood that constantly get caked onto them as their deteriorating mental state continues. Well, Hell. it's also like. I mean, Dubai is just more interesting than a random other country because it has like this massive disparity. It's got like these super poor, like almost slave class people, and it also has like the richest people in the world. So, like, just visually, it's more interesting. The overwhelming amount of the upside down Was American oil? flag there in a go. foreign country, I think, has enough symbolism in itself. And its strength is mm -hmm. that it pretended to be a Call of Duty Battlefield clone. It pretended to be another modern military shooter. And that's where its strength lies, because you think it's going to be. And then it changes itself. The story alone is great, but even in a place that you've seen a million times, American soldiers in some place in the Middle East, it still has imagery that sticks with you. Yeah. How about one of my favorite video games well, of all time? Well, because it's more extreme, too. It's just, it's way more fucking extreme. I'm Bioshock. Bioshock, even when it came out, did it have the greatest of graphics? The characters moved in that uncanny valley way, their faces looked very strange, and mm -hmm. overall it wasn't the greatest at the time, but it didn't matter. Early 50s, art deco, steampunk, horror, underwater city. Throwing all this political intrigue, bit of religion in there, and oh my god, there's nothing like it. But even if you play the- Yeah, of course, it, it, it's effectively like a, a variant of steampunk. So yeah, it's again stylized. The original 2007 yeah. version of the game. I remember uh, Jason, I, I bought this game and uh, Jason came over to my house every day and uh, he played it and he beat it. Game, you would still call it beautiful even if its graphics kind of suck because it has that environment. Yeah. System Shock 2, same thing. Prey 2017. Sa have you played Prey? Have you played Prey? I Why have haven't not. you played Prey? Take the same Art Deco style in Bioshock, put it in a space station, change plasmids to alien powers, and give it the dishonored looking UI and characters. Why have you not played Prey? Did I mention the Mick Gordon soundtrack? I didn't mention in the Mick Gordon soundtrack, did I? Sounds pretty cool. Yeah. So, so fast, the ships, the outer this is a video game? Thing? What the fuck? That's badass. Yeah, I love music like this. The last act is that a is little great. iffy, but you should really play Prey. It's over Warhammer. Over decade Every ago? single fuck? faction in Warhammer yeah. pulls from some other media or some other culture, but by mixing that with its sci-fi, sci-fi fantasy elements. But then you take the sci-fi ideas and then you mix it with the fantasy elements like knights and wizards and such, psychers, etc. Yeah. And then you make those giant knights pray to a spirit in their gun with incense. You turn every ship into a cathedral and you've got something that really has a unique identity. The Adeptus Mechanicus. Yeah, exactly. It, it just looks very appealing and it looks very... Like if you see something from Warhammer, you know it's from Warhammer. I think a good example of like what this done right is versus done wrong is look at Warcraft 3 and then look at Warcraft 3 Reforged. The new models are garbage. They suck. But if you go back and you look at the old models, they have that fundamental like flair to them where like they, they stand out and they look great just on their own. And I would even argue that a lot of things in Vanilla WoW were the same way. Like, go back and look at weapons in, like, Burning Crusade or Vanilla WoW, and they have, like, a certain amount of, like, artistic flair to them. Like, remember the axe from, like, uh, Tempest Keep or, like, Soul Cleaver, the axe from, uh, it was actually from, it was from Terran Gorfiend and Black Temple. Yeah, like, a lot of really, like, Thunder Fury, for example. 
Untamed Blade. There's another one, Gore Howl. Uh, yeah, Bulwark of Azanoth. So it's not super high fidelity. It doesn't have like a massive amount of detail to it. But what it does have is extremely stylized and it looks really cool. Combine so body Lair, augmentation Defender. with yes. transhumanism, with body horror, throw on some monk robes, and then have a massive mm -hmm. amount of religious zealotry and steampunk. The goddamn Necrons are undead skeletons mm -hmm. combined with a massive amount of high tech and heavy Egyptian themes. This leads me to the physical badass. part too, because this isn't just games. When it comes to things like arts and crafts, sometimes it's better to have an identity with your crafting than it is to make it look really realistic. Hyper-realism things like dioramas and such yeah. are incredibly impressive, very cool to look at. But sometimes just having an identity in your own work is more important. And I see this a lot, especially online with artists, people uh, it's who a, uh, do It's a famous, I think it's Picasso quote. It said, uh, you know, it took him five years to uh, paint like uh, Michelangelo, but it took him 50 to paint like a five-year-old. So, like, this is a very common theme and a common idea in art in general. Like, I, I can be wrong with, like, a lot of the details, but the essence of it is, is correct. They always try to go really hard to make it perfect. I'd say your artistic identity matters more than the minutia of the art itself. Yeah. Let's use Warhammer Managers, for example. I'm not a top-level painter. I think I'm decent. I don't think I'm bad. But I am not super high-level. But I'm really proud of my Sisters of Battle army. Because the combination of the white armor, the magenta robes... That's very impressive. Uh, I will say that that is a lot better than mine. And by a lot better, I mean, th these are really good, and mine look like shit. And actually creating a base that looks like a field of flowers, I think really adds personality to them. Because you take a faction yeah, it looks that might be one of the, the most evil really and hardcore good. in the Imperium, and you give them like a I love how this guy um, made an entire YouTube video just for the sole purpose to pat himself on the back for his Warhammer 40k painting skills. I mean, you don't see this kind of devotion from just anybody, all right? Docs, a contradicting art style where they look very holy and they have a few of the flowers and all that. It adds this, this neat contradiction to the army. And so I'm really proud of that army. I make mistakes with my painting all the time. The faces look terrible, yep. but I really like the identity they have when you're playing them on the tabletop. I'm working on a Night Lord's army. A really great example of this is Bloodborne. If you actually look at the character models in Bloodborne, you will see that they are garbage. But it doesn't matter because the art style of the game is so, like, it, it, it's so iconic and it's so well done that it doesn't matter. Me right now, here's a picture of my obliterator that I'm currently working on. You know, it's not perfect. A not good all... example for movies is Legend. Remember Legend? Uh, the like, It was like a fantasy movie from like the 80s or 90s. Like, it... it Obviously, it doesn't look great, and it doesn't look realistic, but it does look appealing because of the style. All of my painting yep, Tom Cruise great. Sometimes I use too Valheim. many yep, coats, there you sometimes go. I use too few coats, sometimes I accidentally bump certain parts of the armor that shouldn't yeah, be a certain color when I paint. The... Yeah, there's problems, but... David it has Bowen. an identity that I really like. Night Lords are criminals mm -hmm. and murderers before they even are adults. And so it has that vibe of, okay, unchained, out of the prison, the, the yeah. chains around the hand, the barbed wire. That really gives it this feeling that it, while it has the same color scheme as regular Night mm -hmm. Lords, it feels unique. Going for a super well-painted, 10 out of 10, pro-painter-looking mini is fine, but I think I'd rather take a 7 out of 10 mini with a unique original style first. The reason I want... Yeah, color theme and style of those colors is more important than how well the edges are painted. Of course that's true make this video is twofold. Firstly, it's a reminder to you creators out there that style sometimes is more important than substance. And this is something that a lot of streamers don't really understand either. And it's the reason why Tyler One can be a massively successful streamer with a microphone that looked like it came out of the asshole of a gorilla. 
or it sounds like it came out of the asshole of a gorilla. But other people, you know, they buy a $300 microphone and they're mad because they're not getting 10,000 viewers. Well, you, you don't understand, like, where the value is coming from. You don't get it. Yeah, streamers have this issue. YouTube content creators have this issue, uh, etc. People keep... No one's mad because of that? No, no, I, I absolutely think this is true. I think that a lot of people that are streamers, and you guys tell me if I'm right about this, a lot of small streamers over upgrade their setup too early and they don't focus on content they focus on having a really good looking camera or having a really good microphone or something like that which that's not the real goal going for perfect instead Aesthetics, of going yeah. for unique often the media that i consume games movies tv shows i often re-watch the ones that are seven eights out of tens more than i re-watch the 10 out of 10 ones because sometimes the things that are perfect don't speak to you and you don't enjoy as much as the things that are decent and secondly i wanted to make this so i can provide examples of the difference between graphics and art direction horizon. and yeah, which one you should aim to go for it also helps me so that i can point to this video if anyone this is also a big concern that people have with ashes of creation actually it's because ashes of creation doesn't have like a very particular style that you can tell hey this is ashes of creation and to a lesser extent i think this is an issue with um with lost ark as well i think lost ark doesn't have as much of a defined style I, I think they have a style but it's not as defined and iconic and appealing as something like world of warcraft final fantasy or uh, genshin impact like i'm thinking of games that have like great style like riot riot has an incredible fucking style with valorant like, they completely nailed it. Whatever they were going for, they got it 100 fucking percent. Uh, let's say Diablo. Diablo has a fucking amazing style. Overwatch, S-tier style. Uh, let's see, besides that, OSRS. Great style for what they're doing. There you go. And Fortnite, amazing style. Elden Ring, amazing style. And... There are also games that have, like, style doesn't make your game good or not, but people will remember the style of a bad game, but they will forget the style of a, a you know, of, like, a, a decent game that, you know, was, like, okay. Valorant's bland as fuck? Well, then why does everybody do fan art of it? It's because maybe, you know, other people like it. Says to me, why do you think that game looks good, its graphics mm -hmm. are terrible, i.e., Bioshock or something because graphics don't matter graphics are temporary and art direction is forever thank you very much for you watching this I video can. if you want to buy merch That's this is another one of my merch shirts i like this one a lot i think it's pretty good let me go ahead and answer some questions from y'all hey brick i know you said before if gamer stuff's legit make a flavor what would it be called uh i would probably call it something like like anime thigh sweat or anime ab sweat not because i particularly want to but more so because i think that would sell like hotcakes Ricky, how do you think about the new Pentakill app? Schlatt really had a good idea with the titty milk name. That was such a good fucking name. Holy shit, that was so good. Album. It's pretty good, though I think I've been a little bit uh, spoiled by that? Guilty Gear. I, I thought to myself, damn, this isn't bad, but it's not Guilty Gear. More of an Adeptus Ridiculous question. Would short sleeve mechanical men's shirts ever be a possibility? Maybe. Probably you have to buy a whole bunch of dark red shirts. And at that point, it almost feels like dark red long sleeve, dark red short sleeve. Is it Merch is hard to do. Is there enough overlap? Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Actual questions. It's pretty good. I'll see you next time. It might be a Legends of Runeterra video. I kind of want to do like a follow-up. So we'll see. Bye-bye. I think this was a really, really good video. I think he gave great examples, and especially the distinction between Battlefield and the second game. I, I hadn't played the second game, so I don't remember it, uh, what the name of it was. But, like, the distinction between them was absolutely fucking great. This is a great fucking video. Bricky. I've never seen his content before. We'll probably subscribe, maybe watch some more of them. Uh, I'll link it to you guys so you can do the same. And uh, Bricky's awesome. I'll watch him for a while. Yeah, this is my first video of his that I've seen. Yeah, I think this is fucking great. And uh, right, really good video and explanation. Yeah, I think that more and more you're going to see games going for that type of stylization. And I think that's a great thing. Like, you go for it like... I don't think Grand Theft Auto has a great style, personally. FIFA doesn't have a great style. 
Uh, Warzone, I don't think, has a great style. Uh, Counter-Strike does, but that's because it's so iconic. Uh, let's see. Uh, Forspoken, I don't think, has a great style to it. Uh, it. It's not unique enough. I don't think Rust has a great style. And, and why? Because that's not the point of the game. It's not like style is a make or break for games. I just don't think it does. Uh, you know, where you talk about games that are very stylized, League of Legends, Minecraft, Valorant, World of Warcraft, Fortnite, Among Us, Apex Legends is 50-50, I'd say, uh, Overwatch, Genshin Impact, Valheim, Elden Ring, uh, Lost Ark to an extent, uh, Path of Exile, uh, I, I wish they would lean more into that personally, and, and yeah, th those would be some of the games that I would say are, uh, you know, th those are the ones that have like memorable styles that like whenever you think of the game, you think of different images in the game.